45 stroke one diesel electric locomotive. This was built by British Rail and Derby Loco Works in 1961 and was originally numbered D40. So this is uh, basically what's known as a one Coco one bogey. Now this is off the class 46 number D182 and basically what that means is, is that we have three powered axles powered by uh, electric traction motors and then we've also got a pony truck as well which is uh, a non-powered axle. Originally when this locomotive was built it had a central box head code which displayed the train reporting number. Now in 1973 British Rail had introduced a system called TOPS or Total Operation Processing System which was a automation of the uh, rolling stock locations and all the wagons and everything all on a computer database and the peaks were known from Derby Salsa Type 4s to class 44, 45 and class 46. Now upon the tops as well uh, in 1976 they uh, had the head code as 000 and upon in 1981 where this locomotive had received a heavy overhaul at Derby Loco Works the uh, the marker lights were then added. So joining me today is the chairman of the Class 45 Stroke 1 Preservation Society, Mr. Pete Dennis. How are you doing? Oh yeah. So um, I was wondering if you could provide me a little bit more history about the loco in BR service. Okay, uh, so it was built in 1961 yeah. at Derby Loco Works. Um, it went into service initially at Bristol Bath Road Depot. Um, working northeast trains between the southwest and the northeast. Okay. Um, then it was transferred to the Midland region. Yeah. And it worked predominantly between Sheffield and St Pancras, okay. and a few other bits and pieces in between. So th that's where it spent most of its working life, really. Um, and latterly, it did some work um, across the Trans Pennine route between Liverpool and York and up to Newcastle. Yes. And yeah. That and would into have been North Wales. That would have been in the later days of uh, yes. the peak days yeah, when the, the last, HSTs last took over the uh, yeah. high-speed Midland mainline runs. Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah okay. In the later years. Yeah. Yeah. And I would like um, I'd like to ask why uh, why preserve four five one three three out of all the other locos? Um, because when it was withdrawn, it was still in good condition. It only had a minor fault, and the only reason it was withdrawn was because they had to get so many off the books at a certain period of time. Mm. Um, so it was a very quick fix, and also it had recently been through Derby Loco Works um, for a lot of um, repair work. Um, so it was overall, it was in good condition. Okay, so the 45 Stroke 1 Preservation Society was formed in 1990, uh, and I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the locomotive's history and preservation. Right, so we purchased the loco in 1990. Um, it was stored at March Depot in uh, Cambridgeshire. Okay. Um, they were very helpful in uh, getting us getting it back running again, which uh, we managed to do on the depot itself. Um, oh, very just doing good. a few minor repairs, yeah. And then it came to Midland Railway Centre in um, May of 1990. Um, so since then, it's worked a lot of um, turns on the Midland Railway. And then it's been across the country to um, different railways on sort of long and short stays. So, okay. Yeah. And um, and that will hopefully be happening very soon in the future because this locomotive is going through a rather extensive overhaul. I was just wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about that. Okay. So um, we decided, uh, having owned it for nearly 30 years, um, that it, although it was still running fairly reliably, um, it was time to do some. Um, um, heavy work on it um, okay. just to see it fit for the future whilst there's still people the skills and knowledge around um, and parts are available um, it's getting more and more difficult to um, source for some parts so um, mm. yeah it was sort of a, a now or never opportunity really so yeah so the the engines um, had all the cylinder heads off and the liners out new bearings fitted mm. um, electrically it's having a complete rewire complete rebuild of the um, electrical cubicle um, and various other mechanical jobs um, all the um, motors have been overhauled inside the body um, lots of other bits and pieces like that really okay well uh, yeah. thank you very much for the interview anyway Pete anyway yeah, um, you. if you want to support 45133 with the pro preservation project um, I'll leave a link in the description below
in the early days of diesel traction, there was still a lot of steam locomotives around, and they actually heated the carriages up using steam from the locomotives. Now, early diesels actually used their uh, steam heat boilers fired by diesel to uh, heat the carriages up You're still using steam heat. This here is a Mark 3A boiler, which was used in Westerns and Hymac locomotives before uh, being planted into D182. Uh, so how it works is, is that you've got a central cylinder which acts as a combustion chamber which fires diesel into the cylinder, very similar to a Wabasto heater on a narrowboat and then you've got these fire tubes around the boiler uh, which heats the water jacket up and pressurises it to 40 psi. The Peak Locomotive Company have uh, done a pressure test on this boiler which has come out of D182 where it is found to be leaking and it is undergoing rectification to the leaks. So Pete, I was just wondering how do you put the stroke 1 in 45 stroke 1 and uh, just tell us a little bit more how the ETH works please. Right, okay. Um, so originally this loco was fitted with a steam boiler and um, as more and more air conditioned uh, coaches were introduced um, they can't be powered by steam, it's got to be electricity. Um, so the steam boiler was removed and it was fitted with um, electric train heating supply so it was quite an extensive modification to the loco um, so the power is generated by an additional alternator fitted on the end of the power unit um, uh, that um, generates at three phase AC it comes into this cubicle here where it's rectified to DC uh, at 800 volts and then, it, and then it goes through cables through jumper sockets from the end of the loco onto the train is the main heart of any diesel locomotive, its power unit. In this instance, this is a Sulzer 12LDA28B, which is a 264-litre 12-cylinder diesel engine, which weighs in the region of about 30 tonnes on its own. Um, derivatives of this engine were used in the Class 44, the Class 45, Class 46 and the Class 47. Um, you may be deceived in the fact that this is a V12 engine, but it is actually two straight sixes uh, bolted together and it is basically synchronised in the middle with uh, synchronising gears. And this engine produces about 2,500 horsepower. So this is the turbocharger for the locomotive and it weighs about 1.2 tonnes on its own. Uh, the air is actually intercooled as well, because basically when you compress the air it heats it up, which is kind of how a diesel engine works anyway. Uh, but obviously cold air is more denser and more air equals bigger bang, which equals more power, which is why you have two intercoolers, one on each side. Also as well, this is the main generator for the locomotive as well, which 
uh, supplies all the power needed for the ancillary components as well as for the traction motors. Um, the the uh, main generator also acts as a starter motor for the engine too.